This morning, our scripture passage is going to come to us from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. It's great to be back with you guys this morning. My name is Steve Sherrill. I'm the pastor here at Payless Community Church. And uh, last week, uh, I was gone on a week of study leave. It was a really productive uh, week to do some future planning. And I just want to I want to thank Micah, who preached while I was gone. If you guys missed last week, as Micah wrapped up uh, the series that we'd been in, uh, it was a four-week series called Is It Just Me? If you missed that final week wrap-up, you need to head to our website this week. And make sure that you check out uh, the sermon video there so that uh, so you can see uh, how that all uh, concluded. But uh, we're going to start a new series this week. And I want to start by asking anybody here, like, you can shout it out. Do you have a favorite worship song or a hymn that's sung in church? Who's got a favorite song? Shout one out. Blessing. The Blessing. Okay, there's one. What else? He Reigns. He reigns. How, great how Great Thou Art. Uh Uh-oh, too many people talked. I want to say it again. Graves to Gardens. gardens. King of Kings. Kings. Yeah, there's some good songs. You know, some of my favorite songs are are songs or hymns that that somehow speak to a situation that I'm going through. Right? When I can relate to the words that I'm hearing that are being sung or the words that that I'm singing, it's, it's easier for me to enter into worship. To, to connect with God. You know, back in, uh, in December uh, this last year when I was sick, I, I came to a point where, where I felt pretty discouraged. I honestly wondered if I was ever going to feel good again. My wife Katie played the song Gratitude for me. That was the second song that we sang this morning. And she played this song Gratitude, not because she thought that it would some connect in some special way to me. Honestly, she played it because she's like, hey, you got to hear the song. I really like it. And I connected with the song immediately. For the next several days, I put this song on repeat in my phone. And when I say I put it on repeat, I literally uh, played this song nonstop for like three days. It was like the, the, the worst three days where I felt like I was just like, I could barely get out of bed. I was weighed down with with this feeling of of helplessness, right? Not being able to to make myself feel better faster. And and instead of focusing on how bad I felt, I wanted to focus on God. My wife Katie and I, we read scripture together every morning and and I wanted to read the Bible with her, but, and Katie and I tried to do our our daily uh, time in the word together, but I couldn't focus at all on what I was reading. It just was like, it was nonsense. It wasn't doing me any good. And so instead of reading the Bible, I listened to worship music, particularly that song, Gratitude. I felt a peace when I would hear the words from that song that says, Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. 
Now, I literally could not physically get up, but I could absolutely use the time that I was sick to praise the Lord. And as I said, today we're, we're going to start a new series. This it's is week one of a series that we're calling A Mighty Fortress, and it's based on Psalm 46. And so we're going to spend just the next few weeks, the next three weeks, talking about this psalm, Psalm 46. And we're going to read Psalm 46 for three weeks in a row. And we're going to look at the message of hope that's found in this psalm. Because songs can be powerful. And I don't know if you know this, but the book of Psalms in Scripture is actually a collection of song lyrics. And like a lot of songs, they were first written in response to events in the lives of the authors. Now, eventually, the whole Israelite community used these psalms, these songs, in their worship. After Israel returned from exile in Babylon, many of the songs that were written over centuries were collected and compiled, making the book of Psalms. Some of the most powerful songs written over time come with a powerful story behind them. How many of you are familiar with the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God? Who's heard the hymn, A Mighty Fortress? All right, a good percentage of you guys. A Mighty Fortress is Our God. There is no hymn that is identified with the Protestant Reformation more than Martin Luther's A Mighty Fortress. And in addition to to, to Martin Luther's skills as, as a writer and as a, as a Bible translator, as a preacher. Luther was also a, an amateur m- musician. And so alongside all of his theological writings and, and his translation work of the Bible into German, he also wrote 37 hymns. And the song, A Mighty Fortress, has a powerful background based on Psalm 46. And Luther, he wrote this song as he went through a tragic season of life. The first words of the song that he wrote, of the first words of A Mighty Fortress go like this. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. And as I was researching this song and its history, I was amazed at its timeliness and how we now find ourselves in a similar situation today. In 2014, author Rebecca Florence Miller, she wrote a book interestingly titled, get this title, A Mighty Fortress, Hope from the Midst of an Infectious Disease Epidemic. She wrote that in 2014. And I want to read what she said, uh, some of what she said in her book. She explains the backstory to the song, A Mighty Fortress. And she writes this. She says, In 1527, the Black Plague reemerged in Germany as it did from time to time during its second European pandemic. When it came to Wittenberg, local institutions and people were faced with impossible choices to stay or leave in the midst of outbreaks of disease. Luther decided to stay and help care for the sick. His son contracted the plague, but recovered. His, wife, his wife's exposure to the plague while pregnant with their daughter Elizabeth may have weakened the baby, and she died at just five months old. Miller continues by saying, Imagine the fear and despair that swirled around Luther at this time. The world was changing rapidly, and little seemed firm or steady. Can you relate to that? She says, he felt attacked, not only by the Pope and his supporters, but also by his fellow reformers. He was going through depression and worry for his family, and then he had to confront the deadly outbreak of infectious disease. The author here, Miller, she then challenges the reader to imagine the world in Luther's day. She continues, as you read the words of this hymn, picture yourself in the midst of Wittenberg with Martin Luther. Conflict and turmoil are raging around you. You have had times when you feared for your very life because of your faith declarations. You find yourself in conflict with fellow Christians. You feel very alone at times. At times, a dark depression descends upon you. 
And now, to make matters worse, the plague has come to your city. You find yourself doing the exhausting work of nursing the desperately ill back to health. Your own child gets this dreaded disease. Surely there are times where you are very afraid, but above it all, you declare in faith that God is your mighty fortress, your safe place. You cling to him instead of your fear. You are freed to serve your neighbor despite your fear. You move forward even in the darkness because you are ultimately safe in Christ. Those words that she wrote, imagine the fear and despair that swirled around Luther at this time. The world was changing rapidly and little seemed firm or steady. Those words struck me because I think many of us can relate. We can imagine. The last couple of years have been unlike anything that we have experienced in our lifetime. And the turmoil hasn't really slowed down. The world continues to rapidly change. And in my opinion, decline. What Luther felt in 1527, many of us are feeling today. See, his response, though, to the despair, it wasn't a retreat from God and from God's word, but it was to, to dig deep and to create something from the word that would minister to people for centuries. Let's look at the first three verses of Psalm 46. We're going to do Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. The psalmist writes, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. Now, while, while many other psalms begin with, with a description of, of, the, of the psalmist's crisis, Psalm 46, the poet begins with God's provision. Right? He looked to God for help in difficult times, and he found it. He could say these things from experience. How do we respond to times of crisis in our lives? Do we respond like Luther and the writer of Psalm 46, looking to God for our strength and our refuge, or do we let the fear take center stage? It's important to understand what Luther was really going through. It wasn't just the plague. He was wanted by the Catholic Church. And when I say wanted... I mean that the Catholic Church wants Luther dead. He had challenged the church in a way that the church was not interested in being challenged, and they wanted him dead. Now, some of you today in the church world, you're like, big whoop, the church is unhappy with me. What can the church really do? But at this time in history, in 1527, the church had as much or, in some cases, more authority than the government. And so if the church wanted him dead... He was in trouble. Add on top of that the plague, a very deadly plague. His son had already had the plague. His daughter died at five months old. How would you respond? With fear? Or would you sing of God's provision? Now we know that King David wrote many of the Psalms, but he did not write all of them. And Psalm 46 was actually written by the sons of Korah. Now, who were the sons of Korah, you ask? Well, I'm so glad you wanted to know because the sons of Korah have a pretty interesting story. And their story can be found in Numbers chapter 16. I'm just going to read one verse because to read it all would take too much time. And then I'll explain it. Numbers 16, 1 says this. Korah, son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and certain Reubenites, Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, became insolent... And rose up against Moses. So you can kind of mix the stuff in the middle. Korah became insolent and rose up against Moses. Now already this does not sound good for Korah. To make this really long story of, the, uh, of Korah short, it's because of his insolence against Moses, God literally opens up the earth and swallows him and the other family members that were insolent with him opened up the earth and swallowed them. And now as Korah's ancestors, this is your legacy. 
Right? This story got written into Scripture so that everybody would know what happens when you get in God's way. That's the backstory for the sons of Korah. And so suppose for a moment that, that you're looking through your family history. How many of you guys are into the genealogy stuff in your family? Yeah, so there's several hands. You guys like the genealogy of your family? So, so imagine you're doing some genealogy work in your family, and you're looking through your family history, and you found out that the earth had opened up and swallowed your great-grandfather. And this is now your legacy as a son or an ancestor of Korah. How do you respond? You could respond with, with shame or guilt, sadness or regret, anger and rebellion. I suppose those would be pretty legitimate responses. Or, as we see here, you could respond with faith. See, as Psalm 46 begins, we are told of God's abundant and immediate help, even though everything seems to be in opposition to us. The psalm tells us that on the basis of the Lord's strength, that they will not fear. Even the mountain fall into the sea, we won't fear. Now, one needs to consider whether the sons of Korah were thinking of their ancestor who was swallowed up by the earth, when they wrote in this psalm of when the earth gives way. But in any event, the Lord is to be feared above any catastrophe that the world can bring. Right? That, that God himself was a place of refuge. That God himself was strength for his people. That God alone was his refuge and strength, right? Not God and something or someone else. That God himself was their help. Not from a distance, but an ever-present help. This is so good for us to remember that God is an ever-present help. We can have confidence when everything else around us seems to be out of control because God is ever-present, and therefore, we will not fear. I love how the psalmist applies the logic of faith. If God is a real refuge, strength, and help to his people, then there is no logical reason to fear. Even in the biggest crisis, though the earth give way, scholars have, have said that the, they call it the robust and defiant tone that the psalm is written in, it suggests that it was composed at a time of crisis, which makes this confession of faith doubly impressive. See, in the same way that Luther wrote A Mighty Fortress, based on this psalm, in a time of crisis, we can respond to catastrophe similarly. We can say, though, though the earth give way, Though the mountains fall into the sea, the waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake, God is greater than them all. The psalmist considered the most frightening, humbling, natural phenomenon imaginable. And he points the reader back to God. Right When the world seems to be tearing apart, we are to find safety and peace in God's presence. Whenever we face difficult seasons in life, we've got to put our hope in Jesus. Luther, in his greatest distress, was inviting us to sing the 46th Psalm in concert, challenging the devil to do his worst. Right? When Satan is seeking to, to assert himself and destroy every or the very order of creation itself, in the midst of such a threat, Psalm 46 calls all of us to confess that God is still our only refuge and strength. The important thing here, though, to, is to realize that God is refuge and strength, a strong refuge. See, God is often referred to in the Old Testament as Yahweh. Yahweh is translated in English as I am. So he's, he's not the God who was. He's not the God who will be. He is the great I am. 
So, so Yahweh is. He is right now a means of help in a time of trouble. And he's totally available. He's always there. All we have to do is run to his refuge. And it was a truth that Martin Luther rejoiced in. And he made it the starting point for his hymn. The first words, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. I wonder if, if you or, or any of your children were ever afraid of thunderstorms. Thunderstorms remind us of how small we are in the world. And, and, and to a child, the, the clap of thunder can seem like the sky is breaking apart. It's so terrifying for some children that, that they'll scream out for their parents in the middle of the night. Hollywood has, has profited on our fear of natural disasters with movies such as The Impossible, Twister, Into the Storm, The Gray, The Perfect Storm. These movies keep us on the edge of our seat with, with reminders of how powerless we are. And in the same way that a parent's reassuring voice and presence is often the only way that, that a child will go back to sleep during a thunderstorm, God's presence is our only source of peace in, the, in this chaotic world that surrounds us. And so is there anything that you're afraid of today? Is there anything that's happening in the world that strikes fear in you? It'd be understandable if you said that there was. But as Christians, we must acknowledge where fear is trying to control us and instead turn to the one who is bigger than the source of our fear. Right? Take that fear and run to God, your refuge and your ever-present help. See, we have something today that the psalmist who wrote Psalm 46 didn't have. We have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and we have the Holy Spirit which resides in us. Verse 2 of A Mighty Fortress that Luther wrote, it points us to the hope of Jesus. He says this in the song, Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing? Were not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing? You ask who that may be. Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord, Sabaoth his name from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. That line, you ask who that may be, Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord, Sabaoth his name. Martin Luther uses this, this word, Sabaoth, which is often misunderstood as meaning Lord of the Sabbath. That's not what Luther was trying to communicate here. Sabaoth, or, or Yahweh Sabaoth, is actually translated in English Bibles as the Lord of hosts. And so, as I researched the meaning of this Lord of hosts, I found that it means the God who is sovereign over all the powers in the universe, both visible and invisible, human and non-human. It's also translated as the Lord Almighty, the God of great strength and ability. Luther was actually communicating through these lyrics what Psalm 46 is teaching us, that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Who is this God? Christ Jesus, it is he, Lord of hosts, Lord Almighty. You see, so many people in the Old Testament had faith only because of what they were told about God, or how they had seen God move in the lives of some. We have so much more than stories that have been passed down. We have personal access to God, the Almighty, the Lord of hosts, Jesus Christ. See, we can go directly to him, our refuge. And when we read in verse 1 of Psalm 46 that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble, what this is saying is that, that we, have a, we have personal access to the only one who can help. We can, we can personally take that fear or tragedy directly to God. His Holy Spirit can give you the strength that is needed not only to survive, but to thrive. Would you pray with me?